Right, thank you. You can hear me okay. Right, today I'm talking about a very introduction to software-defined radio. I'm going to start off by talking about why on earth do we need a software-defined radio? Uh, what is a software-defined radio? And I'll talk a little bit about the products that our company make. And then I'll give three uh, example uh, applications of uh, software-defined re radio, including digital uh, television transmission and reception, uh, GSM base station, and uh, a 4G uh, system being deployed at the University of uh, Guildford and uh, also being deployed in the Scottish Highlands somewhere. So back in the 1940s, life was frightfully simple. You had free modulation schemes. You had Morse code. You had the BBC transmitting AM modulation for entertainment and there was a little bit of frequency shift keying going on. And then kind of in the 1950s, it started getting complicated. Someone invented FM, and uh, obviously the transistor uh, radio started taking off. And then about 1991, uh, an explosion of radio standards took place on the back of the uh, 2G GSM system that was released. So broadly, you can divide the different radio standards into four different categories. There's the various data um, radio standards, which you're probably very familiar with, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, LoRa, and so on. There's the mobile standards, such as 2G, 3G, and 4G. And then there's the entertainment-based uh, systems, such as digital television, digital satellite, and their second generations. Uh, DAB and DAB2, and obviously good old-fashioned FM and AM. And then you have the navigation-based radio systems, such as GPS and Galileo, and the Japanese and Chinese versions. So if you like, this is an engineer's uh, view of uh, uh, software of the radio um, uh, environment. So as a designer, you're normally asked not only to produce one of these, but you have to produce some combination of these for modern day products. So for example, your 4G phone will support 3G, 2G, uh, probably GPS and so on. So the cost of actually developing a uh, specific piece of silicon for this suddenly becomes horrendously expensive. So software becomes a, a very much more affordable route to uh, uh, generate these. So let's have a flip it on its head now and look at it from the consumer's point of view. Uh, I think most of you probably will recognize uh, this situation. You have your AM, FM radio in the kitchen. You have your Wi-Fi router somewhere in the house. You may be having DAB in your car. You've got some sort of combination of uh, satellite cable or uh, free view. Uh, you'll also have your 4G tablets lying around and so on. So you have a box, basically, for each radio standard. Um, my wife is a minimalist, and uh, she would like to just have one box and not a whole room full of electronics. Uh, she also would like it to be wireless. Uh, I never quite understood that bit, but uh, uh, she's very keen for things to be wireless. So the idea is we have this single box software defined radio which replaces everything else and it's largely future proof. So if someone invents a new software defined radio standard, a new radio standard, it can be, an app can be downloaded and so on. So let's start looking at a little bit more detail at the software defined radio. I first of all like to emphasize that a software defined radio isn't the card that you buy from Crowd Supply or from Amazon, but it's actually a whole system. So you have the RF parts, which would typically include an antenna and some kind of RF filter, which prevents you being jammed by interfering signals and also stops you interfering with other systems. Uh, you also have the radio module itself, which would include some sort of transceiver unit, and then it would either include an ASIC or a field programmable uh, gate array logic system, which provides the connection between the radio and the computer. And these will typically be using USB 2 or 3, 
uh, or PCIe. And then you have your computer itself and the repertoire of software which you can download off the internet or is supplied by the manufacturer of the equipment. Uh, bear in mind that today's entry-level computers are now multi-core uh, vector maths uh, geared up machines. So it's been a tremendous uh, leap of progress in the uh, hardware platforms that we have for our computers these days. And of course, they connect to good old-fashioned Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and ADSL. I could talk about our transceiver. Uh, it's a very complicated animal, and I think this is probably true for most of the uh, radio chips used in software-defined radio. So they're highly programmable beasts. Uh, we'd like the term field programmable, which takes on a whole new meaning uh, here, of course. And uh, uh, we're obviously looking for uh, low power consumption and for today's applications you don't just have a single channel uh, radio now but you actually have what's called MIMO where you would have one, maybe two uh, transmit channels and two receive channels working on different antennas. So the idea of the company I work for is to produce the chips we then produce the modules, and we also be starting to produce entire systems for uh, our customers now. And uh, what we're relying on is our third parties to produce the software, which we then run on those products to uh, generate the different applications. So, for example, we have both USB and PCIe products, and uh, I'm not really into um, bashing the competitors, they each have their own value. Um, but the main limitation on USB is the amount of traffic you can actually get down the USB cable. So typically for USB 3, you're looking about 30 mega samples per second uh, for MIMO uh, transmit and receive. So that kind of sets the maximum speed for the hardware. Uh, PCIe is a bit more relaxed than that, so typically you're looking at something like 60 mega samples per second uh, for a full MIMO transceiver system. Uh, some of the radios will actually have waveform playback, which I personally find very useful for debugging uh, radios as you're developing them. Our designers have come up with all sorts of fancy cases, so there's an, not only an evolution of what goes inside the box, but there's also an evolution in the box that they actually come into. So a little bit about our radios. Uh, basically, you can buy them from Crowd Supply. Um, other companies will sell them through Amazon. Uh, our crowd supply does give a comparison to some of the competitors which will help you choose whether our product's the right product for you or whether one of our competitor products is more suitable for your application. We have a open source policy in our company, so the actual hardware is open source. So you can actually read up about the chipsets that have gone into them and uh, you can then get the data sheets and learn how to program all the different parts and develop uh, a radio at any level of detail which you wish to. We have our own Lime Suite software which uh, has two roles. It primarily was intended to test the chip as we developed it but it also produces a C library which you can then link into with your uh, software and uh, then you can link into other languages of course such as Python. Okay now for some typical examples uh, we have a digital uh, television example here and it's kind of the project that we quite like at Lime because um, it's, it's a mixture of things. So it has one of our SDR radios in it. It has a Raspberry Pi Zero. And the software was developed by Everest uh, Korsjord, uh, I think from Denmark. And um, he has both a transmitter and a receiver for digital television. So within a couple minutes, you can actually be broadcasting your own uh, digital television stream. Uh, subject to the local regulations, of course, uh, wherever you are. 
Another system that we have, which is actually deployed here, uh, which I believe is working uh, reasonably well, is a GSM uh, base station. Uh, I think on each of the data porter cabins uh, here, they have one of these base stations. And it consists of a Raspberry Pi, again one of our SDR modules, and a power supply. And it's providing GSM coverage over this uh, site. It's based on open source software developed in Germany uh, by our friends at Osmocom. Uh, so it's actually, uh, as I say, an open source, fr a free to use uh, system. At the high end of the uh, system, there's also, uh, we have systems with a, um, a high processor, so i7 processor. And this is actually being used to uh, generate 4G signals and allows you to do uh, video telephones uh, around the office or in a small local area. And it's also being used in some macro uh, base station developments. So for example, we have a trial system at the University of Surrey in Guildford uh, on top of the 5G IC centre. And another system is being rolled out, which I think is 20 watts, and is going to be deployed in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. And this is using commercially available software, such as Amerisoft and Quartus. And uh, I think the uh, hardware is on the LimeNet uh, project, uh, for those who want to follow up on that. So if you like, it's a combination of second generation, professional quality software defined radios. Uh, developments in the uh, microprocessors themselves, and also developments in the open source uh, software and also commercial software, that's enabling uh, these uh, radio systems now to be uh, used for entertainment, uh, for surveillance, for uh, mobile communications, and we're gradually making progress to that uh, uh, single uh, box radio. Okay, that concludes my talk. Thanks. Okay. Um, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, and just if you could try to keep them short in general, and if you have specific, very specific questions, maybe uh, talk with our speaker afterwards. It's not a question. It's just one of your units is strapped to that pole to your immediate left. <laughs> I was wondering, so could you give us an estimate about how long it would take to set up a mobile phone repeater? A mobile phone repeater? Uh, we've done a number of projects with uh, repeater companies, so that can be done fairly quickly. Um, best way is to contact us and we'll give you a software state for one of the radios. And then you can just develop whatever else you need to make it compliant with uh, regulation. Um, I thought Osmocom was supporting LTE. What, why are you using proprietary software for the, um, the LTE projects? Uh, I, I don't actually know the answer to that one. If you could raise your hand so I can see it, that would be incredibly helpful if you have any more questions. Okay, I, uh, I think that is it. Um, thank you very much. And...